Hey guys, welcome once again. This time we are going to check on bypass capacitors. In this video, we'll see why do we need bypass capacitors? How does a bypass capacitor work? Which capacitors are best for this application? And how to select them? So, buckle up guys, let's go for a ride. We use integrated circuits in electronic system and they run on DC power supply. The performance of the ICs degrade if the input supply has some ripple or noise. If there is a digital IC, then the noise increases the clock jitter. In high performance digital ICs such as microprocessors and FPGAs, if this noise is present then those will have very difficulties while working. Well, the traditional way to specify the sensitivity of an analog IC to power supply variation is the power supply rejection ratio. For an amplifier, power supply rejection ratio is the ratio of the change in output voltage to the change in power supply. Therefore, it is necessary to keep the high frequency noise away from the chip. This is generally done with a combination of electrolytic capacitors and ceramic capacitors. Well, where does this noise come from? We already know the electricity is nothing but the flow of electrons. These electrons flow all over the circuit through the ground plane. Unfortunately, this flow of electrons is not constant because of the PCB traces, wires, component pins, connectors and cabling on which the electronic circuit works. These all things possess some parasitic inductance and resistance. The value of this is very small but if we add it up all, this value is big enough to affect the flow of current. Inductors resist the change in the current flow so this gets worse as the frequency of a signal increases. The microcontroller unit provides the signal to various loads. These loads consume power dynamically, which give rise to current spikes. So these factors affect the power supply line and generate spikes even in DC power supply. And it is called as electrical noise. But in this case, we have considered only the electronic system itself. But in real world, there are tons of other devices which work simultaneously with the electronic system. So the electrical noise is also radiated from magnetically induced currents from other systems, also from nearby mechanical vibrations, and there are so many factors. These noise can be very devastating for digital ICs. Now next question comes. How does a small capacitor solve this problem? The noise which is affecting the power supply is in AC form. A capacitor behaves like an open circuit at DC voltages and if there is an AC component in the signals traveling in the circuit, capacitors begin to act like a short circuit and don't let this noise enter in the digital device. At the same time, it charges up to its maximum level. When the digital IC is switching and providing some signals to the loads, then it needs a remarkable amount of current immediately, so the capacitor provides that reserved energy right away. A capacitor is placed in the circuit where it will suppress or bypass signals. So these capacitors are connected in parallel with the ICs. The bypass capacitors are also known as decoupling capacitors. They act as a frequency dependent resistor. Noise to the power lines is completely unpredictable and changes in nature every time. These capacitors should be placed as close as possible to the ICs. If these are placed farther away from the power or crown pins of the IC, then it will also result in unwanted inductance and resistance in the path. The closer to the load a capacitor is placed, the more amount of noise is bypassed by this capacitor. 
If the frequency of the noise is less than 50 MHz, then a capacitor of value around 0.1 microfarad or 10 nanofarad is sufficient. At frequencies approaching above 50 MHz, we may need multiple bypass capacitors. But this frequency of the noise is very unpredictable. So connecting multiple capacitors in parallel is the best practice. But which capacitors are best suited for bypassing the noise? There are so many guidelines to consider while selecting a bypass capacitor. A large electrolytic capacitor can be used if there is low frequency noise. It acts as a reservoir of charge to supply the instantaneous charge requirement of the circuit. On the other hand, smaller ceramic capacitors are used when there is high frequency noise. As capacitors will need to provide current very quickly, the first and most important aspect is to choose capacitors which has low equivalent series resistance. The ceramic capacitors has low ESR. So typically, ceramic capacitors are used for decoupling application due to their wide temperature tolerance, ability to withstand wide voltage ranges, low ESR, good stability and reliability. Well, the package and size of the capacitor also plays a very important role while selecting a bypass capacitor. Because when you see a capacitor, it has little inductance and resistance which are known as equivalent series resistance and equivalent series inductance. So overall, a capacitor has an impedance of XC, XL and resistance. And these impedances are like this. So as the frequency increases, the XC of the capacitor decreases. So total impedance of the capacitor decreases. And as frequency increases, the XL increases. Hence total impedance also increases. But there is a region where the impedance of the capacitor is very low and that frequency is known as resonance frequency. A small impedance is present due to equivalent series resistance of the capacitor. This resonance frequency can be different for different packages of the same capacitor value as well. So generally, the engineers put different size and different values. So we should select a capacitor which will have lower impedance at the frequency of the noise. Well, it's a tedious process, but we get precise noise separation out of the decoupling capacitor. So now you can select a decoupling capacitor for your ISIS. And that's it for now. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section. Hit the like button if you like this video, subscribe to my channel, and finally, thanks for watching.